Thomas Jefferson, founding father and principal author of the Declaration of Independence, envisioned an America where all men are created equal. But over the course of his life, he enslaved more than 600 black men, women, and children. This is the story of three teenagers who were brought to the White House to train as Jefferson's personal chefs. Enslaved at birth at Monticello, Jefferson's sprawling private plantation in rural Virginia, Ursula Granger Hughes, Edith Hearn Fawcett, and Frances Gillette Hearn were married with families of their own. When Thomas Jefferson was elected president in 1801 and instructed that Ursula join him in Washington, D.C., the nation's new capital, followed by Edith in 1802 and Francis in 1806. In the White House kitchen, under the guidance of French chef Henri Julien, they worked long, hard hours and served multiple meals a day, including dishes for Jefferson's bustling dinner parties and social engagements. The teenagers weren't paid to work, but they were given a $2 monthly drinks allowance and permitted to socialize in the local community where free Black people had founded churches, businesses, and lived and worked in the president's neighborhood. But for Ursula, Edith, and Francis, life was far from easy. They spent long stretches away from their families and only occasionally saw their husbands. All three gave birth while working in the White House, but only three of their five children survived. Living a life of enslavement, only two reached adulthood. When Jefferson's second term as president came to an end in 1809, Ursula, Edith, and Francis were finally reunited at Monticello. They continued to cook for the former president until his death in 1826, after which Ursula and Francis were sold to other families. Only Edith was eventually freed through the efforts of her husband, Joseph Fawcett. Thomas Jefferson wrote that all men are created equal, what do you think he meant by those words? <laughs> <laughs>